Hi guys, I'm Anthony, this is Immortal Games, and we're playing, you guessed it, games. On the channel we discuss board games and card games, but mostly Magic the Gathering. If you would please like and subscribe, I would appreciate the support. So, let's begin with today's topic. I bought a box of Dominaria. So exciting, right? Only $100. So, we're just going to crack the packs and see what we got. We'll start off with the promo. So, the promo is Fire Song and Sunspeaker. It's a legendary creature, Minotaur Cleric, cost 6, 4-6, uh, probably not going to get too much play out of it. It's a uh, red instance and sorcery spells you control have lifelink, which probably turn 6, you're not going to get a lot out of that, but pretty exciting nonetheless. And let's start cracking those packs. Let's see what we get. Probably just slide through the commons. Throw the trash off the table. See what we get here. So we'll just kind of slide through the comments here so they can take a look. But I'm not going to dwell too long on any of them here. And then I'll slow down once we get to the uncommons. Right, Champion of the Flame. He's pretty cool. Plus two, plus two for each R and equipment attached to it. He could be pretty big. Um, don't know if he's going to see too much standard play, but you never know. If there's a red-white Aura's deck, he might see play. We have Goblin Barrage. That's four mana for sorcery. Kicker, sacrifice an artifact or a goblin, should be easy enough to play. Uh, goblin Barrage does four damage to target creature. If this spell was kicked, it also deals four damage to target player or planeswalker. For four mana, I don't know if we'll see a lot of play, but I'll keep an eye out. And our rare is going to be Siege Game Commander, which uh, for 5 mana for a 2-2, two, two, I don't know, we might see some goblin play, I don't really know. But when he comes into the battlefield, you create 3 one run red goblin creature tokens. You know, you always like to see 5 creatures, what is it, 5 creatures, 4 creatures on uh, 1, pretty good. And we have our other legendary for the pack here is Danatha, who is super good. I played in a two-headed giant game, and um, she was so good. Uh, first Strike, Vigilance, Life Link, 2 2 R and equipment spells you cast cost one less to cast. So we have our land and our token. Let's move on to the next one. Commons again. Slide through those. Oh, went too far there. Sorry about that. Alright, so we got our uncommons. We've already saw Ray there, but we'll just come back here. So we've got the Amaranthine Wall, which is a 0 6 defender for 4. Gains indestructible until end of turn. I don't really think we'll be seeing any play out of this because we don't really have a Turbo Fog deck, and even if we did, we probably have better options. <clears throat> we have Weight of Memory for 5, is not too bad. It's draw 3 cards, and target player puts the top 3 cards of their library into their graveyard. Might see one of play in control decks. We don't really know. We've got Yogmoth's Vile Offering. It's 5 mana for a legendary sorcery. Remember, legendary sorceries, you have to control a legendary permanent in order to cast them. It's put up to one target creature or planeswalker card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under control. Destroy up to one target creature or planeswalker, and then you exile it. This card. So, pretty good. Still a bulk rare. Ooh, our legendary is Halar the Fire Fletcher. We've got our kicker legendary elf here. Land token. Next pack. No mythics yet, but we're only three packs in. Commons. We all love the commons in a box, don't we? There's only hundreds of them. Ooh, talk about a good common. Actually, that's an uncommon. It looks like I know nothing, Jon Snow. Okay, so we've got our Wizard's Retort, which is one and two blue, or just two blue counter target spell if you control a wizard. This is a counter spell, literally, if you control a wizard. Fancy that. So we have that. We've got our Thalid Soothsayer, which is four mana, three and a black. Pay two, sacrifice a creature, draw a card. Always a pretty good ability. Oh, there he is. We've got Karn, Scion of Urza. 
big old forty dollar card, three packs in, most expensive card in the set. We're gonna leave him with a special shot right there. We'll just we'll leave him, and we've got Tetsuko. Yeah, see the wife's excited too, <laughs> holding the puppy and everything. We have a. Uh, Tetsuko, or as I like to call him, Shinsuke Nakamura, right there. The man, the legend, and he's gone. Let's return back to this card for a second here. So we have probably what's going to be one of the top cards in standard. It is uh, four mana of any color for a five loyalty planeswalker, plus ones reveal the top two cards of your library. An opponent chooses one of them, put that card into your hand, and exile the other with a silver counter on it. Minus one, put a card you own with a silver counter on it from exile into your hand. Your minus two is create a zero zero colorless contract artifact creature token with this creature gets plus one plus one for each artifact you control. Now more than likely you're going to be using this to dig for cards and then minus to get those cards back. Um, you may or may not be doing the minus two but more than likely you're just going to be building him up to get value out of your deck. I'll leave him right there. Hey, you never know, maybe we'll pull two of those. Looking for those Mox Ambers though, that's the... Uh, that's the goal now. Let's see. Common, 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 common. Hey, ramp common though. Yay! <clears throat> common, 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 common. We've seen this dude before. I have to go back over him again. Ooh, we have Joyer's Familiar. Four cost, two, two flying. Historic, historic spells you cast cost one less to cast. Remember, historic spells are artifacts, legendaries, and sagas. Remember, all planeswalkers are legendaries now. And for our rare, we have Oath of Teferi, which is when Oath of Teferi enters the battlefield, exile another target permanent you control, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. You may activate the loyalty abilities of planeswalkers you control twice each turn rather than only once. So just imagine this with Karn, and now you're plus wanting and minus wanting the same turn. So you're getting pure value out of your Karn. That, that is pure friendship. So, ooh, we got two. Looks like we got a foil. So our foil <clears throat> is Rona, Disciple of Gix. Three mana, one, a blue and a black. A 2-2, two, two. when Rona, Disciple of Gix enters the battlefield, you may exile target historic card from your graveyard. You may cast non-land cards exiled with Rona, <clears throat> pay four and tap, exile the top card of your library. Okay, the issue is is you're paying a lot to exile the cards and she dies to almost everything. And our extra, well not extra, our foils are extra. Another uncommon, we have Tatyova, Benthic Druid. I don't think anybody's gonna say her name right. She's a legendary creature, Merfolk Druid. Whenever land enters oh, okay. the battlefield under your control, you gain one life and draw the card. Google wants to get in on our video today. And uh, she's a 3-3, three, three, which means she dies to a lot, but uh, if you can keep her on the battlefield late in the game, she can gain you a lot of life, draw you a lot of cards. She's okay. Let's move on to the next one. Hang on with me. we got a lot of packs to go through. But, I mean, we're already halfway there. <laughs> Common. Gonna go through this common parade quite a bit. And there's our uncommons. Okay, so time of ice. This was great in the two-headed giant event as well. <clears throat> time of ice is tap target creature and opponent controls. It doesn't untap during its controller's untap set for as long as you control time of ice. Now you do this two turns in a row, and then you return all tapped creatures to their owner's hands. Now this returns all creatures regardless of how they were tapped. Keep that in mind. <clears throat> we have the Orcish Vandal. He is two for one one. Sacrifice artifact, he deals two damage to any target. Our rare is Mishra's Self Replicator. Uh, another bulk rare is a two two. Whenever you cast a historic spell, you can pay one and make a copy of him. <clears throat> another foil. We have a human wizard. Whenever he enters the battlefield, deals X damage to our creature and opponent controls where X is the number of wizards you control. And our legendary, if I don't drop it, is a four drop three three Wrath Caption Ship's Mage. Flash flying. 
3-3 may cast extort spells as though they had flash. He may find himself into a blue-white control deck. Depends on uh, how many historic spells they find themselves playing. <clears throat> we'll see. Back down to our left. It's not our tokens. Very consistent. I think you're getting a token instead of ads now. Which is really nice. They printed the ads on the back of the tokens instead of just uh, <clears throat> getting one or the other. <coughs> Working with this. Strep and a box of cards. It's beautiful that way. So we've got our cards here. Let's do our commons. How excited are we all that they reprinted Ops? I think we all are. Keep going through this here. There we are. Our uncommons again. Alright, so we've got Untamed Kavu. One in a green. 2-2, two, two, kicker for 3, he's got Vigilance and Trample, and if you kicked him, he enters the battlefield with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counter. So if you kick him, play him for 5, he's a 5-5, five, five. Uh, but he always has Vigilance and Trample. Really good option. I think he could see play if Mono Green Stompy becomes a real thing. We have Sage of Latnam. 1 in a blue, sacrifice an artifact, draw a card, 1-2... Our rare is Verdant Force. Three green and five is a 7-7. Seven, seven. At the beginning of each upkeep, you get a 1-1 one, one Sacrilene. Not too shabby. We have another foil in the form of Charge. Creature you control get plus one, plus one, two on the turn. And our legendary creature is Whispered Blood Winter Vist. Four cost, Human Cleric. Sacrifice two creatures, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Which is good for any leftover 0-1 Cleric tokens you may have when you're right does not go the right way. Huh, see what I did there? Thanks, that. Don't worry, guys. About halfway through this video, we'll probably end up bumping our way through the uncommons because you'll have seen them all. All right. And we're there. Chainer's Torment. So we've got four cost saga. Chance torment deals two damage to each opponent, and you gain two life. That happens two turns in a row. Not too bad. And then on the third turn, you create an XX Black Nightmare Horror Creature token, where X is half of your life total rounded up, and it deals X damage to you. Well, so if you're really banking on ending the game really quickly, this could be a good option. However, they could just chump block your to horror token. Horror token. Um, just about until the end of the Earth, so keep that in mind. If it doesn't have Trample, it may not be going anywhere. Oh, we have good old Juggernaut. Four cost, attacks each turn of Fable, it's a 5-3, and it can't be blocked by walls. <clears throat> Our rare is Kamal's Druidic Vow. Two green and X. Uh, you may cast this. Only if you control a legendary creature, planeswalker, another legendary sorcery, guys. Look at the top X cards of your library. You may put any number of land and or legendary permanent cards with converted mana cost X or less from among them into the battlefield. Put the rest into your graveyard. Um, it's okay. The issue is you have to play a lot of legendaries. If we get that green-white legendary deck people have been talking about, you may see play in this. Ooh, Grun the Lonely King. Really strong by himself. But, he gets blocked a lot. He's a 6 cost 5-5. Five, five. Uh, you can kick him for 3. And if he was kicked, you put 5 plus 1 plus 1 counters on him, making him a 10-10. And if he attacks alone, you double his power. So he can swing as a 10-10 or as a 20-20, which is really nice. But, like I said, he can be blocked by Sapperling over and over again. Land. Token. That one's pretty cool looking. <clears throat> Alright, we've got more. There we go. Oh, our big old friend, Sarah Angel. 5 cost, 4-4, four, four, Flying Vigilance. We know her so well. Good and limited, not so good and constructed. Our Knight of Malice. First Strike, 1 black. One colorless, first strike, hexproof from white, and only white, Knight of Mouse gets plus one, plus zero, as long as any player controls a white permanent. I think that you will see these knights played side by side, um, as they will buff each other. In a Quinday deck, specifically. 
We've got Board the Weather Light. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a historic card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Our rare is Traxo, Scourge of Krug. I love that name, Scourge of Krug. Sounds like a big fat orc. Um, so it's a 7-7 seven, seven for four. It's a legendary artifact, which means it is two types of a um, historic spell. <clears throat> Only counts for one, though. It's a uh, trample. And he enters the battlefield, tap, and doesn't untap during your untap step. However, whenever you cast a Historic Spell, you untap Traxos. So this guy could be really scary when deck playing a lot of Historic Spells. Maybe that green-white um, legendary deck. Maybe. We never know. His price isn't really up there, but he could be... Saying that like I'm surprised. Okay. We've got Sentinel the Pearl Trident. Five costs, three, three, flash. Flash is always good. And when he enters the battlefield, you may exile target historic permanent you control. If you do, return that card under the battlefield <clears throat> under your control at the beginning of the next instep. We have Spore Crown Thalid for two mana, one in the green. You get a two, two fungus. Uh, each other creature you control, that's a fungus or a sapperling, gets a plus one, plus one. So you've got your Spore Fungus Lord. Pretty important if you want to play the Black Green Spore deck. Seal Away. Ooh, it's making me uh, feel that our rare is also a legendary here. Seal Away is one and one white. Flash. When Seal Away enters the battlefield, exile target tapped creature and opponent controls until it leaves the battlefield. Important to remember you can do it on people's creatures while they are attacking before they hit you. And we have Zahid, Djinn of the Lamp, or Genie, as they are called. Uh, he costs six, but you can pay four and tap an untapped artifact you control rather than pay his spell's mana cost. He's a five six flyer who is also about a dollar fifty, but he's pretty awesome looking. Look how sly that devil looks. His lamp's pretty sweet too. So we're gonna let him go. Comments, oh, the comments. There's so many. All right. We have our first little extra land here. Uh, one of our memorials, Memorial to Genius. Enters the battlefield, tap, adds a blue. You can pay five, four and a blue, tap it, sacrifice Memorial to Genius, and draw two cards. Not bad if you get land flooded. Not bad at all. We have the Sorcerer's Wand for one. Colorless mana. Your creep creature has tap. This creature deals one damage to target player or planeswalker. If this creature is a wizard, it deals two damage to that player or planeswalker instead. Uh, not a bad casting cost. Not a bad ability in the wizard sex. However, the equip cost is three. It's kind of high. I like this card a lot. However, it is not very expensive, and we'll see if it becomes anything. It is Prime Evils or Primaval's Glorious Rebirth. Return all legendary permanent cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Five, a white, and a black, so it costs seven. You already need a legendary, but if you could load your graveyard with a bunch of ridiculous stuff, you could just blow somebody out of the water. It could be insane. Especially, I believe there's a red, black, legendary, uncommon? I can't quite remember the name, but it gives all of your creatures haste. I see another legendary hiding. Ooh, we got Slimefoot the Stowaway. He's our uncommon legendary creature. One of black and a green. So two, three. Whenever a sapling controls dies, he uh, aristocrats people. One damage to each opponent, and you gain one life. <clears throat> and pay four, make a one-one sapling. So him and the sapling lord, there's your deck. Land. Sapperlings. That looks more like a snail. It's a snail fungi. Well, we've got through our first, like, two rows. We have a decent amount of cards there, so... Still hoping for some more Mythics here. We've really only pulled the one. But he was worth it. Come on, Karn. 
All right, so we've got Song of Frailies. Frailies. She's a green planeswalker, but we've only seen her in the EDH deck. One to green. Till your next turn, creatures you control gain tap at one color of any man. Um, <clears throat> add one mana of any color to your mana pool. You do this on the first turn, second turn, and on the third turn, you put a plus one, plus one counter. Not just get plus one, plus one, but put a counter, that's important. On each creature you control, those creatures gain Vigilance, Trample, and Indestructible until end of turn. Now you can blow somebody out of the water with this card. Keep that in mind. It is not very expensive, but it is very good. Ooh, another wand. We'll just paste that to the side. <clears throat> Our next memorial, Memorial to Glory. In his battlefield tapped, add a white, pay three and a white, sacrifice it, get two one one white soldiers. Oh ho ho, there we go. Lyra Dawnbringer. Three and two white. Legendary creature and angel. Our next mythic rare. She's a five five with flying, fur streak, and lifelink. Other angels you control get plus one plus one and have lifelink. And she also happens to be about sixteen dollars, so we're just gonna put her Right there next to Karn. Let's pitch these tokens. So beautiful. So we have our 40 and our 15. Looking at like 55. We'll just keep the trend going. Maybe this box will pay for itself. Maybe it will. We'll see. We'll see. All we have to do is pull a Mox Opal. Maybe it's a Fairy. Sorry, Mox Opal. <laughs> In my dreams, a Mox Amber. We'll see what happens. Come, 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 come. All right. We got one of our reprints here, an icy manipulator. <clears throat> Four mana, pay one and tap. Tap target artifact creature or land. Um, decent for a fog effect. Kind of expensive to cast it though. Nature Spiral. We have one green and one. Return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. I believe this is also a reprint. Merfolk Trickster, I like this one. Two blue. Two two flash when Merfolk Trickster enters the battlefield. Tap target creature and opponent controls if it loses all abilities until end of turn. Very good combat trick. Um, not sure where it's going to go just yet. Don't know if it's going to go in the Merfolk deck um, or if it's going to find a place somewhere else or if it'll have to wait till rotation to be fully useful. We'll see. Land token and we'll talk about. Torgar, Famine Incarnate. So he is two black and six, total cost of eight. He's a seven six. As an additional cost to cast this spell, you may sacrifice any number of creatures. This spell costs two less to cast for each creature sacrificed this way. So if you really want to pass the, or um, <clears throat> get rid of those little bitty sapperlings to make this big dude come out quicker, you always could. Uh, when Torgar, Famine Incarnate enters the battlefield, up to one target player's life total becomes half their starting life total rounded down. So if you could somehow sack three creatures coming in, you could play this guy for two and take some money from 20 to 10, you're probably in a pretty good spot. <clears throat> He's a bulk rare though. Oops, sorry. <clears throat> All right. Commons, commons, commons everywhere. Ooh, I think this is going to be so you can play. Divest. Target player reveals their hand. You choose an artifact or creature card from it. That player discards that card. Going to see play. There we are. All right. Our uncommon is Skizik. Reprint. One red and three colorless. Kicker for one red. He's a 5-3. He's got Trample and Haste. And at the beginning of the end step, if you didn't kick him, you have to sacrifice him. Good for a one-shot hit. However, if you're going to play it, um, you might just want to play Fleet Bill Cruiser. But there's something to be said about playing Skizik. This has some value. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, it may have to wait. If you don't want to pay for Hazrets, pay for Skizik's. We've got another way to memory. There, we got a land, Clifftop Retreat. Uh, enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a mountain or a plains. Add a red or a white to your mana pool. All the lands are about four or five bucks. Pretty good. We've got Baird, Steward of Argive. Two and two white, two four vigilance. Creatures can't attack you or planeswalker control unless their controller pays one for each of those creatures. So, we've got a ghostly blizzard. Sort of. On a stick. 
He's pretty good though. <coughs> commons, baby, commons. We've got commons. So we've got Triumph of Gerard. One white and one. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control with the greatest power. You do this twice. And then target creature you control with the greatest power. It's flying first strike and lifelink until end of turn. It's a good little white weenies pump for two mana. I like it. <coughs> the Flame of Keld. One red and one. Discard your hand. Draw two cards. If a red source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player this turn, it deals that much damage plus two to that permanent or player instead. Um... I don't know about this one. It's good if you don't have a hand to start with, and this was the last card in it. That's about all I got to say about that one. Oh, look at that. We jumped right into another saga, but this one's a rare. One red and two colorless. This is the first eruption. The first eruption deals one damage to each creature without flying. Not terrible. Add two red mana to your mana pool. I'm always a big fan of that. And sacrifice them out, and if you do, the first eruption deals three damage to each creature. I can get behind this card. We've got Arvad the Cursed for our legendary creature. Three, a white and a black. It's a 3-3 three, three. legendary creature, Vampire Knight. Death Touch Lifelink. Other legendary creatures you control get plus two, plus two. We were talking about that. Resurrect all the legendary creatures. This is where he would go. And maybe he would just go in that vampire deck as well. We'll see. He may not get played. <coughs> Right. So, what we've got here, we've got Knight of Grace to start our own comments. One white and one. Two two. First strike hex proof from black. Hex proof from black. Knight of Grace gets plus one plus zero as long as your player controls a black permanent. Any player, including yourself, like I said, two knights go together, makes them stronger. Sanctum Spirit. Four costs, three, two for a spirit, lifelink, discard a historic spell, and it inter uh, gets indestructible until end of turn. Not too great, but if you got a useless card in your hand, maybe you want that. Ooh, we've got a Gilded Lotus. These have always been good. Five mana, add three mana of any one mana, or add three mana of any one color to your mana pool. Gilded Lotus still sit about four dollars. Pretty, pretty. Ooh, Foil Sapperling Migration. This is just uh, makes two one one sapperlings. If you kick it, you get four of them. <clears throat> and our legendary creature is Slin Vote of the Rising Deep. He costs eight six and two blue. He is an eight eight. Uh, his kicker is two. When he enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, you return all creatures to their owner's hands except for Merfolk, Krakens, Leviathans, Octopuses, and Serpents. Uh, I don't know how much he'll see play until maybe after rotation. Maybe he still won't. Uh, we will have the blue. Dinosaur, which I can't remember his name right now, but um, you would just play that and not this, so. Comments. Here we have our arcane flight. One blue flying cat. Win win. We have another memorial. Yay! Memorial to Unity. Memorial to Unity enters the battlefield tapped. Taps for a green. Pay two and a green. Sacrifice it. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand. The rest on the bottom of your library. Pretty good to have on a land, I'd say. We have seven for the Thorn Elemental, big old Thorn Daddy. You may have Thorn Elemental assign its combat damage as though it were not blocked. So if even if it gets blocked by 1-1, you could say, I'm not even going to kill the 1-1, I'll just deal seven to your face. 
We have a Forebear's Blade. I personally like this card, but it's not worth a lot of money. It is a quick creature, gets plus three, plus zero, and has vigilance and trample. When a quick creature dies, attach Forebear's Blade to target creature you control. So it bounces around the battlefield from creature to creature. Uh, cast three, equip three. Hard to get rid of. This is Ergoas, or Orgors, the empty one. Uh, four and two black, four three flying. Whenever the empty one deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a card at random. If that player can't, you draw a card. Pretty nifty. Land, more sapperlings. No, there's so many sapperlings. Cracking another one. Oh my god, another Skirt Prospector. Who knew? We have so many commons. Do you know commons had everything in common? We have a lingering phantom. For six, he's a 5-4. Whenever you cast a historic spell, you may pay a black. If you do, return the lingering phantom from your graveyard to your hand. He's not constructed playable, but limited. Not a bad bomb. We have another thorn elemental. We have a black blade reforged. Funny to get the two swords back to back like that. This one is two to play. Equip creature gets plus one plus one for each land you control. An equipped legendary creature costs three. Any other creature it costs seven. It's not good for other creatures, but for a legendary creature, this is not very bad on. Um, you can make one small creature very, very big. Better hope it has trample. Speaking of small legendary creatures that get very big, we have Shauna Cisse's Legacy. It's a zero zero for a green and a white. And when Shauna Cisse's Legacy can't be the target of abilities your opponents control, Shauna gets plus one, plus one for each creature you control. Did very, very well at the two-headed giant event that I went to. Still didn't win, but she did really well. We're hoping to make this pool get a little larger. Maybe the other rare pool would be a little smaller. If we can turn that around. We still have about half the box to go, folks. Sorry about that. It's going to be a long video. We got another Skizik. We can skip it. Settle the score. That's a new one. Looks like Liliana's fighting demon. Two black and two. Exile target creature. Put two loyalty counters on a planeswalker you control. I quite like this card. It's not an instance. No rask is uh, contempt, but it is good. You bound me with a contract. Only your death could end, and you thought me the fool. So this is the last demon Liliana has to kill. Maybe we'll see that in the next set. Maybe we will. So, uh, pretty good if you're playing a Planeswalker deck. Our rare is Sylvan Awakening. <clears throat> one and two. Uh, two colors, one green. Until your next turn, all lands you control become two two elemental creatures with reach and indestructible and haste. They're still lands. Really good if you're trying to hold up a wall to save yourself some from, from some flyers. Um, or if you're lane flooded, say you got 15 lanes on the battlefield, it costs three. You got 12 lands to swing in with. Uh, other than that, mostly defensive. It's okay. We've seen Rona Disciple of Gix before, but she was foil last time, so I'm a little bit less impressed to see her now. But check that fro out. She's rocking it like a bro. And, ooh, look, another sapperling. Why do all these sapperlings look like they came out of the sea? What's up with that? Was Dominaria underwater? What happened? Teferi raise it? You know, better question. How is Teferi still alive? Isn't he old? Like, super old? He should be, like... Older than... Karn old. We have Spore Swarm. 3 and 1. Create 3 one, one green sapperling tokens. Not too shabby. 4 for 3 is not too bad. Final parting, <clears throat> two black and three colorless. Search your library for two cards, put one into your hand and the other into your graveyard, then shuffle your library. Eh. Our <clears throat> rare is two-headed giant. Two red and two colorless. Four, four, when two-headed giant attacks, flip two coins. If both coins come up heads, two-headed giant gains double strike until end of turn. If both coins come up tails, two-headed giant gains menace until end of turn. If anything, it's a four, four for four. Uh, if you double flip the coins, it only has positive effects, so if you like 4-4 four, for four, 4, play it. If you like good effects, play it. If you don't like a vanilla 4-4, four, four, don't play it. Ooh! Ooh, there we go. Shinsuke. Shinsuke. It's 
Sorry, guys. There's no more wrestler cards in the set. It's the only one we got. That's all we got. Got another Song of Fraley's. Another Juggernaut. Then we got Territorial Allosaurus, the only dinosaur in the whole set. Two green and two. Five, five. Kicker for three. When Territorial Allosaurus enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, it fights another target creature. Um, to be honest, I'm cool with a four cost for five, five. I don't really care about the fighting another target creature unless you draw them late in the game and it's really necessary to kill something. So, <clears throat> other than that, I just play him for the four for five, five. We have Adelie's the Cinderwind. One red, one blue, and one. 2-2 two, two Flying Haste, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, wizards you control get plus one plus one until end of turn. If Red Blue Wizards is an aggressive deck and not a controlled deck, this is the card you're going to be looking out for. Um, will she become expensive? Probably not. She's still an uncommon. Probably easy to get your hands on. Um, but she will play a key role if that becomes the deck. And I think uh, we've opened of her, so... Let's see what happens there. <clears throat> so, we got some rats, rat colony. Who's making a rat deck? Seriously though, how many rat decks are we making, guys? Alright, so we've got another Ice Manipulator. We've got a Howling Golem. It's like a Howling Mine, but for everybody and only when it attacks or blocks. Two, three. We have Moldroth of the Grave Tide. Big old Grave Daddy. I really liked him. I pulled him for the uh, two-headed giant event. He is three, a black, a green, and a blue. He's a six-six, and during each of your turns, you may play up to one permanent card of each permanent type from your graveyard. Yes, that does include your lands, um, everything except for instants and sorceries. So your planeswalker dies, you play your planeswalker again. Doesn't really matter. Uh, he is so very strong. If you can get him out and keep him out. So, he's also about $7. Set him down next to the other Mythics. We got Quinde, Big old daddy double strike. So, he may be an uncommon. He costs one white and three. He's a 2-2 two, two with double strike. Creatures you control with first strike have double strike. Um, if we see the black and white knights play the same deck together, he will sh assuredly be in it. Scene, Urza's Tome. Two costs, pay three and tap it, draw a card, then discard a card unless you exile a historic card from your graveyard. So if you really don't want those historic cards in your graveyard, might as well exile it and get a card for three. We fight with fire for three, it deals five to target creature. Uh, this was really good and limited. Never saw the kicker go off, it's just very expensive kicker. Uh, kicker for six, so in total it would cost you nine to deal ten damage divided as you choose among any number of targets instead. So uh, you could just pay nine to deal ten to somebody's face. Not bad and limited, but I uh, didn't really see anybody get there. We've got Warcry Phoenix. One and three colors for a two, two, flying haste. Whenever you attack with three or more creatures, you may pay three. If you do, return Warcry Phoenix from your graveyard to the battlefield, tapped and attacking. Next. And it's really good. Okay. Alright, rare in that same pack with the Phoenix. We've got uh, Teshar, Ancestor's Apostle. Three and a white, two, two, Bird Cleric, Flying. Whenever you cast a historic spell, return target creature card with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. This card is really good if you want to reoccur things. The issue is that two, two. Dies to Shock, dies to Magma Spray. Uh, dies to everything except for Fatal Push. Um, but I think even a Fatal Push can kill it in the right circumstances, so... It's okay, but not amazing. No Sun Titan, that's for sure. It's trying to be, but it just can't be a Sun Titan. They'll never do it again. Titans are gone forever. <clears throat> I stick to it, you know, for common, land of elves sure aren't common. That's why I bought four. Four white border land of elves. We've got another Triumph of Drar. We have another Flame of Kelp. 
We have a Shalai Voice of Plenty. <clears throat> three and a white for a 3 4 flying. You, planeswalkers you control, and other creatures you control have hexproof. So this goes real well with Lyra Dawnbringer. Uh, you can pay four and two green, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. So it makes your creatures even bigger. Pretty good. We have a foil syncopate. This would be my second foil syncopate. So pretty neat there. I got my other one out of the two headed giant event. And we have another uh, Tadiova. Regular syncopate. Alright, so here we are to our uncommons. The Eldest Reborn. I like this for an uncommon. Five. Each opponent sacks a creature or a planeswalker. Each opponent discards a card on the next turn, and on the third turn, you put a target creature or a planeswalker card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. A really good. Um, long-term reanimation spell that gets things in the graveyard to begin with. So, pretty good. Probably going to discard lands to it because they don't want to fuel your fire there. But it is an uncommon and not a rare, surprisingly. We have another Merfolk Trickster. We've got Jaya's Emulating Inferno for two red and X. Uh, it's a legendary sorcerer and it deals X damage to target, or <clears throat> damage to each of up to three targets. So, I don't think it's too amazing. Um, but you could just throw X and uh, throw it in somebody's face. So you could just fireball them for one extra red. We've got a foil replicator. That's pretty neat. Probably not worth too much. And uh, we have Valduk, Keeper of the Flame. Two and a red. Three, two at the beginning of combat on your turn. For each R and equipment attached to Valduk, Keeper of the Flame, create a 3-1 red elemental creature token with Trample and Haste. Exile those tokens at the beginning of the next end step. So with him and Tetsuko, you could just run somebody through with 3-1 red elemental tokens, but you would have to all in on Valduk. <coughs> So no Mox Amber yet, guys, but uh, Hope is not out yet. Hope is not out yet. They say you should open about four to five Mythics per box, and we are only at three. So there is hope. There is hope. We've got another Untamed Kavu. Seal away. Our rare is a Dreadshade. Not this box. Three black. Three, three. Pay one black. Dreadshade gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Um, not a bad bomb. We have Foil, Song of Freilies, like it. Hey, there's that red-black I was talking about. Three, a black and a red. Three, three, Flash, when Garner the Blood Thing enters the battlefield, return to your hand all creature cards in your graveyard that were put from anywhere this turn. Other creatures you control have haste. That's our first cast down, so that's a little disappointing. <clears throat> cast down is a short target non legendary creature for one black and one. However, I can just buy this, it's pretty cheap, um, but may be relevant, may not. We'll have to see how many legendaries get played. This non legendary clause could uh, come into play. Sarah Angel, we've got Diligent Excavator, one blue and one. Whenever you cast an historic spell, target player puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. Um, if Mill became a thing, this wouldn't be too bad in a historic Mill deck. We also have that Mill Crab and the Mill Draw spell, as well as everything that has Mill related from the last couple of sets. So, you never know. Our rare is Nabon, Dean of Iteration. One and one blue is a 2 1. If a wizard entering the battlefield under your control causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So, more likely, we're going to see him in EDH over anywhere else. Um, just because that entered the battlefield trigger uh, ability on the wizards, since we did just have that whole EDH wizards deck come out recently, uh, we will probably be seeing that quite a bit. But uh, constructed standard playability, I don't know. Just don't know. Let's see. So we've got an Elf Hand Druid, one and a green. Zero two, taps out a green to your mana pool. 
Uh, but you can tap it and add two green to kick a spell, so that's cool. We have our Fire Fist Adept. We saw him win earlier. Shield of the Realm. Two. For an equipment, if a source would deal damage to a equipped creature, you prevent two of that damage, and its equip is one. Our rare is Marwyn the Nurturer. It's two and one green. Legendary Elf Druid. Whenever another elf enters the battlefield under your control, you put a plus one plus one counter on Marwyn, uh, and she taps for add an amount of green equal to the Marwyn's power. This is the one one. So even at the least, it will tap for one mana, but uh, if we see elves, we be really strong. If we don't see elves, we may not see any play. We're getting low on cards. Let's see what else we get. Hey, there's that elusive land war elf that we were talking about. So we've got in Bolus's clutches here, another uncommon we haven't seen yet. Two blue and four colorless. Enchant permanent, you control enchanted permanent, enchanted permanent is legendary. So we always get one of these mind control effects every set. Um, this is no different, costs a lot of mana, uh, probably won't see any play. So just about the same as everyone else. But the art's pretty neat. Bolus kind of looks like a frog though. Not a lot like a dragon. But Liliana looks like she's swapping sides, doesn't she? <clears throat> doesn't it? Look at that. Your contract is in default. You belong to me now. Serve or die. We got uh, Evil Liliana again. I like it. So we've got Wild Onslaught. Three and a green. You can kick it for four. Put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. If this spell was kicked, you put two plus one plus one counters on each creature instead. And our rare is a Mythic Phyrexian Scriptures. Two and two black. Put a plus one plus one counter on up to one target creature. That creature becomes an artifact in addition to its other types. Um, you destroy all non-artifact creatures, and then on turn three, you exile all cards from all opponents' graveyards. So it's really not a bad card at all. So this would take care of, let's say, Scare of God decks. It would do magnificently against God's Pharaoh Gifts decks. This would set you up perfectly for that. You could even play it the turn the God Pharaoh Gift comes out and just take one God Pharaoh hit to the face and just get rid of everything else. So... I don't know how much it's worth though. We'll just put it next here, next to the rest of the mythics. <clears throat> Another slime foot. Some more saplings. Big surprise. Another memorial of unity. We have another final parting. Our rare <clears throat> is the Mending of Dominaria. Two green and three. Turn one and two, we put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Then you may return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. What's important there is it does not have to be a card that went into the graveyard from the ability. Uh, it could have already been there. And then you return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Then shuffle your graveyard into your library. So uh, mill me not, I say. Mill me not. Our legendary creature is our Frog Spirit. Uh, Yargle Glutton of Urborg. 9-3 for 5. Good in limited. Um, never going to see play outside of that, though. But I would um, I would probably draft a copy or two of them. We got one more. Two more rows, boys. Two more rows. We hit our four mythics, though, so we may not see another one. I guess I can't hope to pull, uh, pull a Mox and a Karn and a Lair. That would be rude. We got an arm knight. We got a memorial to war, though. Hey, it's uh, taps. Come in, tap. Taps for a red. Pay four and a red. Sacrifice it. Destroy a land. So that's a land for a land. Should be two lands, but one land for another land. If their land's a dual land, I guess. We have Goblin Chain Whirler, who has first strike three three. When Goblin Chain Whirler enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to each opponent and each creature and planeswalker they control. So, in red, this is pretty good because it comes in and just spikes everything. We have a Foil Mountain. And our legendary creature is Raph Caption Ship's Mage. It's a 3-3 with Flash Flying. We've seen him before. <clears throat> you know how many cats we can make fly, guys? We could make an entire island of cats fly. I uh, bet they'd catch all the rats then, wouldn't they? All of these rats, though? I don't know. We've got another Wizard's Report. What we haven't seen any of is Wizard's Lightning, unfortunately. So I'll have to buy some of those. 
Zalfarin Void. When Zalfarin Void enters the battlefield, you scry one and adds a colorless. So, if you really want a colorless lane just for the scry, you got it. Our um, mythic is History of Banalia. Not too bad. Six dollar card. Two white and one. Create a two-two white knight creature token with vigilance. You do it again on the next turn, and at the third turn, knights you control get plus two, plus one until end of turn. I would throw this in that knight deck with Quinde. And then we have a Baird Steward of Argive again. We've got so many rats. Chainer's Torment. Um, Deals two damage to each opponent and gain two life. We've seen that before. That's the XX Black Nightmare. Ooh, we got a Dampening Sphere. That's a $5 uncommon. If a land is tapped for two or more mana, it produces colorless instead of any other types in the mount. So basically, if they have a dual land that taps for uh, <clears throat> two mana, it would tap for one colorless. And then each spell a player casts costs one more to cast for each other spell that player has cast this turn. This card's getting a lot of hype for Modern. Um, it will shut down Tron. It will shut down Storm. Um, it's going to get a lot of play. It might even see standard sideboard play. We'll see. Um, it's so big, it's even going to go right here in a mythic pool. And we got Josu Vess, Lich Knight, which is Liliana's brother. Four cost, four or five with Menace. He was really good in the Two at a Giant event. When Josu Vess, Lich Knight, enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, you create eight 2 2 Black Zombie Knight creature tokens with Menace. His kicker is six. So he did cost ten to kick, so it didn't happen more than twice, but four or five for four. Menace was strong enough. We got another Grun. Land and ooh, a Saverling. You guessed it right. I hope you're all praying with me. We want a Mox Amber. Yes, we do. So we've got a Goblin War Chief. Two red and one. Goblin spells you cast cost one less to cast, and Goblins you control have haste. Another drawer is familiar. Our rare is Haphazard Bombardment. Five and a red. When Haphazard Bombardment enters the battlefield, choose four non-enchantment permanents you don't control and put an aim counter on each of them at the beginning of your end step. If two or more permanents you don't control have an aim counter on them, destroy one of those permanents at random. So, junk rare. And we have Arvad again. Because, you know, it's his bad. Har har. I believe we're down to our last three... So let's see here. Let's go through our comments. Fungal plots. One green and one. Enchantment. You pay one green and one. Exile a creature card from your graveyard. Create a one one green sapperling creature token. Sacrifice two sapperlings. You gain two life and draw a card. <clears throat> we have Guy's Blessing. One and a green. Target player shuffles up to three target cards from your graveyard into the library and you draw a card. When Gaia's Blessing is put into your graveyard from your library, shuffle your graveyard into your library. Goblin Brush, we've seen that before. And we've got Squee the Immortal. Another junk rare, but he has a reprint. I like the art they gave him. He looks pretty confident that you can't kill him. Two red and one. You may cast Squee the Immortal from graveyard or from exile. He's a 2-1. And we have, ooh, a cleric token that time. Big old sacrifices. Slowly pulling them out of here. Alright. We're getting down there. Got Donald's Bodyguard. One white is Donald's Bodyguard enters the battlefield. Choose another creature you control. 2 1. Sacrifice Donald's Bodyguard. The chosen creature gains indestructible until end of turn. <clears throat> He might say play in the White Wings deck, he's going to be aggressive turn one, and the rest of the turns he's going to be either a good late turn save for your strong creature, or just, I mean, he's a Savannah Lion that protects everything, so it's going to be pretty good. <clears throat> we have Curator's Ward, one blue and two colorless, Enchant Permit, Enchanted Permit has Hexproof. When Enchanted Permit leaves the battlefield, if it was historic, you draw two cards. <clears throat> oh, we got a Still Leaf Champion. So we did pull at least one Still Leaf Champion. He is a creature, Elf Knight, of 5-4, and he can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. So he costs 3 green, 
hey, it's a 5-4 that can't be blocked by something. That's really strong. So you land more elf, you play him on turn two, and you just go to town. Uh, he's also, I think, got five bucks. So. And we have Tiana, Ship's Caretaker, our legendary creature. Three, a red and white. She's a 3-3 three, three legendary creature, Angel Artificer, with flying first strike. When an R or equipment you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may return that card to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next instep. So she recurs your artifacts and RS. That's pretty cool. Last one. Seen him. Seen it. And we got a Tempest Gin. Eh, how sad. Three blue. Flying. It gets plus one, plus zero for each base guy you control. Cost about 30 cents. Zero four. Legendary creature is Whisper Blood Liturgist. Three and a black two two. We've seen it before as well. You uh, sack two creatures, return hard creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. But we ended on a knight and not a sapperling, so that's pretty sweet. But I just want to thank you guys for watching the video. And if you enjoyed it, remember just to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be opening more content, going over board games, Magic the Gathering cards, and maybe even going over decks that I built, decks that I played with, and there's going to be more content to come. Thank you very much.